So Invincible is easily one of the best shows on TV at the moment. It is just so criminally underrated as it's got such excellent storytelling, such brilliant character arcs, some truly shocking moments, and it's just so sophisticated in how it does its storytelling material, and is very inspired, I feel, from the 90s animated Spider-Man TV series, which was just so fast-paced, so many things happened, so many brilliant shocking things happened, so much brilliant voice acting, everything about the brilliant 90s animated Spider-Man TV series is infused in Invincible, except it has a more modern lands as well as having some truly dark boys inspired things taking place. So not only does it benefit from feeling like a Saturday morning cartoon from a superhero perspective but also has the darker more adult themes and really layered and twisted characters. It's just honestly so good. And I thought it was an interesting release strategy that Amazon Prime are doing at the moment in terms of firstly waiting two years since season one concluded and then kind of drip feeding us content for season two. For example, starting with the Atom Eve special, which was also really, really good, and then giving us part one of season two, and then waiting a couple of months for part two of season two, and then who knows how much longer we have to wait for season three. So I think the release strategy definitely does need to be focused on, as Invincible was so hot when the first season was released, and I just wish that the first part of the second season was at that same level. I thought the cliffhanger in the penultimate episode is really, really good in terms of showing Nolan is the person that has called Invincible, back to him and has actually been living on this new planet with Thraxens, has kind of redeemed himself and now has another son called Oliver. And I just absolutely love the way that you're literally able to feel everything that these characters are feeling, especially Debbie Grayson as well as Mark Grayson, as obviously he does want to beat his dad up for everything that he has done, but his emotion obviously takes over him and he wants to give him a hug. So I just loved all of those tender family moments, but then very quickly it becomes a superhero show again, which is just so wicked. And this season in particular as well, we really do get to see that the Viltrumites really do mean business as they are annihilating characters left, right and center. And on that point, you can't ever really be attached to certain characters. For example, Alan, who was just so cool, as you just never know when they're going to be completely wiped off the map, the Gardens of the Globe in that first episode, which was really cool in the way they were taking it, but then suddenly they removed all of them as Omni-Man killed all of them. So honestly, this show just works so well, as it's just so unexpected, and you just don't know what on earth is going to happen next. I personally can't wait to see the dynamic change when hopefully Oliver comes with Mark Grayson back onto Earth, and then what this means from a relationship perspective between firstly these two characters, but then also with his friends, with his mother, with his girlfriend, with Atom Eve. I know that head Viltrumite did make it seem as if they're going to kill Omni-Man, but that character is just too important and too pivotal to not continue with. So when that version of the character comes back to Earth, or another variant of him, I honestly just can't wait to see what's going to happen next, because there's so much potential. And there's just so many things going on. For example, all of Mark Grayson's college world is taking place, all of the lizards, all of the multiverse stuff, all of the Mauler twins, all of the guardians of the globe, all of the stuff that Atom Eve is going through, all of the lizard people that are now going to be invading Earth, all of the multiverse stuff. There's so much to contend with. And then there's other storyline threads that they have planted in the first season that we still haven't seen come into fruition. So for example, Titan taking over from Machine Head. What on earth happened with Donald? How did he come back? What on earth is really happening with Cecil? I've got a lot of faith that they'll hopefully just wrap up all of these storylines and maybe just continue them in a really good way instead of starting off loads of things and then not really going through with them in the same way that the MCU has recently done. So now let's deep dive into some of those wicked characters. So first of all, we have to talk about Invincible slash Mark Grayson, who is just the coolest character. And I just think the way in which Stephen Ewan voices him is just so good. As like I said, you can really believe everything that he is going through, as well as him being your eyes and ears into this world. But actually, a lot of other characters did share that persona. For example, in the Alan special, as well as in the Atom Eve special, you really are in their heads. And it's just executed in such a good way. So anyway, let's go back to Mark Grayson. So I thought it was really cool in terms of the fact that he is still reeling from all of the shocks and trauma that he has understandably gone through from the end of the first season. And the way in which he wants to personally deal with this is just to throw himself into wanting to be a good hero under Cecil's command for everybody on Earth. And of course, he had to deal with all of the Aquaman type people and just defeat a lot of other bad guys. So I think that aspect is really, really good. And then he kind of chucked it all in and then was following these spider insect people. And this is having a little bit of an impact on the duality of the Mark Grayson persona in terms of, you know, he can't really throw himself into the college world like his friends are. And then obviously his confrontation in episode four with his father and then having to fight these Viltrumites and just really throw himself into being a strong fighter. 
and then soon having to deal with the fact that his brother is alive as well. And his variants are actually really evil on other Earths or are really good and have been captured. So I just feel like it's just going to be so interesting to see what on Earth is going to happen next. I think Sandra O oh, very similarly really believably voices the Debbie character. And similarly, you can really experience all of her emotional breakdown that she is going through as her entire life over the last 20 years has just shattered and destroyed itself right in front of her. So she just wants to leave the house that she made a home with Nolan and of course with Mark as well and she just wants to throw all of his stuff away and that was an interesting clue as of course Omni-Man was telling Mark Grayson that look I left a clue to you if you look through my stories and comic books and the fact that Sandra O's Debbie character is throwing this away might mean that it's going to be difficult for Mark Grayson to try to retrieve this. And then we have Atom Eve and I remember all the way back in season one days two years ago I was like this character is one to watch as she is pretty OP as she can turn any matter into anything that she wants so she is just pretty unstable stoppable and then also you can really see that she is a really flawed character as she is just trying so hard to use her powers for good but when she does do this sometimes it doesn't lead to the good that she was expecting it to lead to and the fact that you know her father is then just saying like look you need to know your place even though you have superpowers this doesn't mean that you're all powerful and all knowing so I just loved all of those kind of messages and then in the Atom Eve special how you get to see her origin storyline and the fact that you know she had to destroy the people that were kind of her siblings and the fact that her mother was still alive but was just being processed and made into a bit of a robotic experimental type person and the fact that she has just wanted to destroy all of this all of her origin storylines in that special were just coming together so well and I just cannot wait to see what the future of this character is going to look like. And I love how the new Guardians of the Globe is a bit of a mix of Justice League and Titans together as of course we have Immortal here and he is now sleeping with Duplicate who was of course the person that was dating Rex Blode who was the person that cheated on Atom Eve with Duplicate and now he's getting really annoyed. He should be the leader of this team but now he's got this immortal guy who was obviously the old leader of the team. So I think Rex Blode is really interesting as he's such a cocky guy and he just can't get anyone to listen or respect him. I think Robot is really, really funny. I think he was very prevalent towards the end of the first season in terms of what is really happening underneath that robotic costume and the fact that he duplicated himself into somebody looking like a younger version of Rex Blode. I'm really intrigued to see what's going to happen in the Terms of the future of the Gardeners of the Globe as like I said they have got interesting threads that they have planted and then of course you have Shape Smith who is being voiced by the brilliant Ben Schwartz who is really an alien from another planet and he does not know anything about how Earth really operates and he does kind of leak a few clues because of this and people are kind of putting two and two together so I'm going to be really intrigued to see what's going to happen with him next as he potentially could take over the entire Earth with his Martian abilities. Like I said before I love the Alan special that was really interesting how you kind of you temporarily leave Mark Grayson while he's in a bit of a compromising position and then you focus on the Alan character and actually he is a really cool character as he has all of the Mark attributes in terms of being a really cool guy and he has been asked to focus on this mission by one of the councils of the entire universe and the person that was voicing him was actually Peter Cullen who is of course the legend who is voicing Optimus Prime in Transformers and then actually this guy is the person that totally stabs him in the back as he is the person that is like look I think there is a mole somewhere here can you go help me find them and actually the mission that he puts him on is effectively sacrificing Alan as he knows Alan is no match against the Viltrumites and then when it does seem as if you know Alan is going to survive this brutal fight then this guy just brutally turns off his life support so I thought the Alan character was so heartbreaking in terms of his storyline. But there's so much more than meets the eye with Cecil and what really happened with Donald in terms of bringing him back to life and I love that the post credit scene at the end of part one is effectively the Mauler twins and how they only really work when they're both on the same level and the fact that it doesn't really work when one is more superior than the other. It was all honestly so good and there are just so many different ways that they can take the rest of this season. I honestly cannot wait to see what's going to happen next in part two of season two and then hopefully in season three and then hopefully we'll finally get that live action version of Invincible which I think has the potential to be absolutely brilliant. This world of Invincible Robert Kirkman has just done such a good job in terms of realizing it. And like I said, I just kind of wait to see what's going to happen next. But what did you think of season two, part one of Invincible? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.